guys, welcome to your fifth lesson on probability. Today we're going to look at favorable versus unfavorable outcomes. Remember, favorable means what you want, unfavorable would mean what you don't want to get. So let's read example one. Example one says, a six-sided die is rolled twice. The given tree diagram represents the following events. A would be getting a four, and not A would be not getting a four. The first question wants us to fill in the probability fractions on the tree diagram. Let's talk about what our sample space for each of our events are. Event A is getting a four, event not A is not getting a four. So, if we wanted A, what would A, what would fall in our sample space? Our sample space is our one, two, three, four, five, six sides of the dice. So in A, we would only have four. So how many outcomes do we have in A? We've got four, sorry, we do not have four outcomes in A. You see how easy it is to make a mistake? It's not four outcomes. The outcome is four, but there's one outcome. That's the number of outcomes. Right, let's look at not A. So, not A, what is my sample spacing consisting of? Well, if A is four, not A must be everything else except four. So it would be one, two, three, four, not four, sorry, five, and six. So the number in my not A sample space is one, two, three, four, five. Five outcomes. So getting a four, I've got one favorable outcome. Not getting a four, I've got five favorable outcomes. So now we're going to pull in the probability fractions on our probability tree. Remember, how many numbers do we have in our sample space? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six possible outcomes. Getting a four has one favorable outcome. Not getting a four has five favorable outcomes. So let's put in our tree diagram. Remember, probability is favorable over poss possible. Favorable over possible. So, the probability of getting A, one favorable over six possible. So every time I see an A, I'm going to have one favorable out of six possible. Because remember, I only want to get a four. That's one option out of my six options. So every time I see a branch with the letter A on it, I'm going to fill in one out of six. Not getting an A is five favorable over six possible because the other five numbers is what I do not want. So every time I see not A, I'm going to write five out of six. Okay, let's draw our um, possible outcomes. I could either get a four and a four, or I could get a four and then not a four. I could get not a four, followed by a four, or both rolls, I could just get not a four. So once we've filled in our probability tree, B1 says, determine the probability of getting a four on the first roll. So let's quickly just discuss the question. We start off by the question saying that a six-sided dice is rolled twice. That's my experiment. So I complete my experiment and they ask, what is the probability of getting a four on the first roll? So at the end of my experiment, not over here, yes, I know getting a four is one over six, but at the end of my experiment, what is the probability of getting a four on the first roll? Which of these four possible outcomes would be my favorable outcomes? Getting a four on the first roll would be getting an A first. So this one is favorable because here I've got a four followed by a four. But my four was my first roll, so that one's included. 
My other favourable outcome would be this. Why? Because they only wanted four on the first roll. Yes, it was followed by not a four, but I got a four on the first roll here. So these are my two favourable outcomes. So remember, when we're working with tree diagrams, when we work across, we multiply the probabilities. So I'm going to get the probability of this with the probability of this, and I'm going to add them together. So the probability of getting an A followed by an A is 1 over 6 times 1 over 6, which gives me 1 over 36. And then the probability of getting an A followed by not getting an A would be 1 over 6 times 5 over 6, which leaves me with 5 over 36. So these are my two favorable probabilities. So to get the total probability, B1, the probability of getting a 4 on the first roll, would mean I have to add 1 over 36 with, five, sorry, with, that's a plus, 5 over 36, and I'm left with 6 over 36. Simplifying that, because I cannot leave it in that form, it's 1 over 6. So that would be my probability of getting a 4 on the first roll. I want to A in the first position. So B2 asks, determine the probability of not getting a 4 on the first roll. So the probability of not A on the first roll, what are my favorable outcomes? That means in my first roll, I must have not A, because not A is not a 4. So which ones are my favorable ones? This one and that one. They are favorable, because on my first roll, I didn't get a 4. So let's work up their probabilities. Not A followed by A means I times 5 over 6 with 1 over 6, and I'm left with 5 over 36. And not A with not A means I times 5 over 6 with 5 over 6, and I'm left with 25 over 36. So these are my two favorable probabilities. So to work out the total probability, I need to add these two together. So I add 5 over 36 with 25 over 36, which leaves me with 30 over 36. And I can simplify that to 5 over 6. B3 says, what is the probability of getting a 4 on the first roll and then not getting a 4 on the second roll? So what are we looking for? Getting a 4 was A, and not getting a 4 was not A. So what do I want? I want a 4 followed by not a 4. So this is the favorable outcome I want. So if I look at all my possible outcomes, do you agree that this is the outcome that I'm going to choose? A 4 followed by not a 4. So how do I work it out in my test? Let's show all I'm working out. Getting a 4 followed by not getting a 4 would mean 1 over 6 times 5 over 6, which leaves me with 5 over 36. Question B4 asks, what is the probability of getting a 3 on the first roll and a 4 on the second roll? So, where does 3 fall? 3 is not part of my A's, 3 is a not A, and a 4 is an A. So that's the order I want. Getting a 3 means I want a not A first. Getting a 4 means I want an A second. So I'm looking for not A and A. So the probability of not an A, because this would be 3 followed by a 4. And out of my possible outcomes, you see that that's my favorable one. Not an A followed by an A. So I just multiply them two together. 5 over 6 times 1 over 6, which leaves me with 5 over 36. B5 asks, what is the probability of not getting a 4 on the first roll and getting? Sorry, not getting a 4 on the first roll and the second roll. So I wrote you a 4 on a 4, I'm mistaken. 
sorry, this one's not a 4 and not a 4. So it's a probability of not a and not a, because neither of these are 4s on the first or second row. Roll and out of my four options, which one do I choose? Not A followed by not A. So I'm just going to show how we're working out. Multiplying across my branches, 5 over 6 times 5 over 6, which leaves me with 25 over 36. And question B6 says, determine the probability of getting at least one A. So, I need an A. It doesn't matter if I get an A and an A, or an A with a not A, I want at least one A. So if we look at all our options, there's an A here, so I can choose this. There's the A. If I look at this option, can I choose this option? Yes, I can, because there's at least one A. So I can choose that, because there's my A. If I look at this option, I've got not A followed by an A, there's an A, so I can choose that option. And lastly, I've got not A followed by not A. I cannot choose this option because there is not at least one A here. So these are the three probabilities that I choose. So that means because I've got all three of these probabilities, I just need to add them together. So I add 1 over 36 with 5 over 36 with another 5 over 36. And I'm left with 5 and 1 is 6, and 6 plus 5 is 11 over 36. So kids, remember when we're doing a tree diagram, we look at the end of our experiment. We don't look at them over here. We must always look at the end of our experiment and look at those outcomes. These are the probabilities we use when we're doing a tree diagram. Because remember, a tree diagram relates to a compound experiment. So I carry out my experiment. Here are the probabilities I must then choose. Okay, great nice. From exercise five, I'm going to do question D with you because it's quite a difficult question. So I wanted to do it with you so you can understand how it works. I'm going to read it and then I'm going to draw the tree diagram that goes with it. So let's see. It says, if a rugby team wins its first game of the season, there is an 80% chance that they will win their second match. If they lose their first game of the season, there is a 30% chance that they will win the second match. There is a 40% chance that they will win their first match. So, there are two matches. So I've got two events. I've got the first match, and we're only assuming that they're going to win or lose, they're not going to draw. So in their first match they can win, and then they can lose. And when they play their second match, they can win or they can lose again. Two events, compound events, two different outcomes. Let's read what we must fill in on the tree. So I'm just going to color this differently. My W's I'm going to make in red, so I don't get confused. So that's my winning. And my losing I'm going to make in orange. Reading the question it says, if a rugby team wins its first game, so if they win, there is an 80% chance that they will win their second match. So where does that 80% belong? Does it belong here? Or does it belong here? Do you agree that it belongs here? Because it says if they win, there's an 80% chance that they'll win their second match. This is their second match. So the 80% goes there. It says, if they lose their first game, so if they lose their first game, there is a 30% chance that they will win the second game. So, if they lose, winning their second game is only a 30% chance. Okay, and the last bit of that says, there is a 40% chance that they will win their first match. So here's their first match. So winning their first match is a 40% chance. Let's fill in the orange, the losing. 
So in that first match, if there's a 40% chance to win, do you agree that they've got a 60% chance of losing? When we move over to the second match, if they win the second match, they've got a 20% chance of losing over here. And if they win their second match with 30%, they've got a 70% chance of losing here. So, this is a difficult question. It's a compound event. They're playing two rugby matches. They can either win or lose in each rugby match. So, let's write out the possible outcomes. They could win and they could win, or they could win and then lose. They could lose and then win, or they could lose both matches. So the first question says, what is the probability that they lose their first game? So, losing their first game. So because it's a compound event, we look at the end of our results. So, losing their first match, which are my favourable outcomes? It would be this outcome and that outcome because they've lost in their first match. So, the probability of losing their first match is going to be the probability of losing and then winning, as well as the probability of losing and losing. So, let's work out the uh, percentages. If we had to work out 60% times 30%, we get 18%. Um, so over here we've got 18% of losing and then winning. And then losing and then losing again, we've got 42%. of losing their second match. So, when I add 18% plus 42%, what do I end up with? 60% chance of losing their first match. What did we say right at the beginning? 60% chance of losing their first match. Cool. Question B says draw a tree diagram to determine what the probability is that they win their second match. Sorry, I already drew the tree diagram. I should have asked that right at the beginning of the question because you can see I wrote this question out. So it says, what is the probability that they win their second match? Which are my favorable outcomes? I want the W to be second. So here's a favorable outcome and here's a favorable outcome. So the probability of winning their second match will be adding these two favorable outcomes together. Here's a second win, here's a second win. We already know that this is 18%, so I'm just going to calculate the win with the win. So I follow the two lines, it's the 40% with the 80%, with the and that gives me 52% over here. So I'm going to add my two favorable outcomes together. I've got 32. So we have 32% plus 18%, and that leaves me worth um, 40, 50%. And that is your final answer. 32 plus 8 is 40, plus 10 is 50. Okay, great lines, that's the end of lesson 5. And now you have the exercise five to do for homework.